Okay, we are now joined by the winning crew chief and the winning owner from 2311, Billy Scott, the crew chief, and Denny Hamlin, the owner. Uh, congratulations, gentlemen, on the big win here at CODA. Uh, we'll get right to questions. If you have questions, please raise your hand and we'll get your mic. We'll start up here to Jim, Bob, Rob, and around the room. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. For both of you, could you just talk a little bit about uh, being able to reach this point today after the rough start that you've had to the season? Yeah, it was a rough start in uh, some respects, um, certainly on the finishing positions. Um, but I think the important thing is that uh, we always knew it was there for speed. Um, so I think this was a uh, – sinking. Um, you know, we always had the speed there. Uh, you know, Daytona crashed racing for the lead. Um, you know, Vegas – had an incident there running inside the top five. So um, I think it was just a matter of time. So it's not like we were, um, you know, wrecking out of races running in the back. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter. Nice to finally finish it off, though. What about Bob? Yeah, uh, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Bob. I mean, we. It, it looks bad on the scorecard for the first three races, but he kind of explained it. And we knew that it was just, you know, too small of a sample size to honestly – judge uh, where they were at we knew that they were fast and um, you know knew it was a matter of time before they kind of marched their way up towards the front so it's good for them to you know finally get the finishes they deserve and and you know even even though at the beginning of the year they they had finishes that probably they didn't so uh, certainly it's uh, they got an opportunity to build a lot of playoff points between now and the start of the playoffs and hopefully make a run Bob uh, Bob Hawkers Fox Sports Denny you had probably a good view of a lot of the craziness there in the last three over in the three overtimes how would you describe it and do you feel I mean do you feel fortunate at all that you know that Reddick won that race I mean he had to I mean how rare is it to be to kind of hold everybody off there for you know four restarts yeah I mean certainly it's a big pressure situation probably for Tyler because you've been the dominant car all weekend you've had the field covered and you know at, at that point when you're leading the race, it's your race to lose. You know, there's not much to gain. There's only a lot to lose if, if he doesn't execute, right? So um, for him to, to manage those pressure situations and um, execute on restarts, it's, it's huge. I mean, trust me, I, you know, it's you get back where I'm at in, in the middle of the field and it's just chaos, right? And so, um, you know, it, it's just a matter of whether the lane you pick, there's a car sitting in the middle of the track or not, whether you're going to get through. But it seems like the, the racing is a lot cleaner in the first few rows. The, the one time the scout strategy worked out perfect, we restarted third on the first screen wide checkered. Uh, I got a cut tire, and so um, just just bad luck and, and whatnot. But, you know, I think this says a lot about Tyler's poise, and it's what I saw all week in his performance, not only the simulator, but <clears> – <throat> Is it like the Oscars where y'all give me the music? Um, it's uh, he, he just slows everything down. He's running fast, but he's doing it in slow motion, which is just a sign of someone that's in control. Yeah, I don't know if it's good chaos or not. I mean, right, we, we had two laps to go two hours ago. And, and it just felt like it just kept going on and on. You know, I, again, I don't know what we do about it. Um, I'll talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go to Rob and then Jeff. Rob Tianson from thepodiumfinish.net. My question's actually going to be for both Denny and for Billy. How validating is this victory knowing what you guys saw in Tyler Reddick? long before he got to be in this number 45 ride with the circumstances uh, surrounding Kurt Busch. Yeah, no, I think it's why they got him, right? I mean, we knew what his potential was. He's, you know, road courses is where he's shown it in the last six, eight months, um, being pretty dominant on several occasions. Um, but we know he's got that ability everywhere. Um, you know, the last two weeks show that, that had a, had a shot to win it coming down the last screen wide checker. And, uh, you know, it's, again, it's nice to finish it off here, but, um, you know, that's completely what we knew he was capable of and, and uh, expect there's more to come. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's why I went after him as early as I did. I just, I, I didn't, 
I wanted to get the jump on all the other teams because I knew he was going to be the most coveted free agent in a very, very, very long time. So um, that's why I got the jump on it. Now it cost me a lot of money to do it, <laughs> but it uh, it pays dividends. You have to you have to have that driver that you feel like can carry you to championships and wins for decades. And I think that uh, we have that guy. Um, and it's not going to stop at road courses, uh, dirt racing short tracks, speedways. He's just, he's got what it takes on every racetrack we go to. Jeff. Uh, Billy, were, were you planning on three stops the whole time there? Sorry, I'm over here. Were you planning on three stops the whole time or uh, was that something where you um, didn't mean to get off strategy from everybody else? Um, yes, it was most likely three, not at those particular laps. Um, so yeah, when the yellow come out early, uh, you know, obviously you expect everybody else in a situation like that that's kind of on the fence to, to do the opposite of you when when it's when he, you've been a dominant car all weekend. Um, you know, and, and kudos to Tyler for staying focused and dealing with you know that was really the only chance, only time we were back in traffic and he uh, dealt with it really well, made quick work of it, kept the car in one piece. Um, you know, and, and we still thought. It was going to work out the best. It still was going to work out the best, even without the way the yellows felt. Um, so we did that with the plan of two stopping from there, right? That still fell into the three stop strategy window we had looked at in the beginning. Um, and you know, untimely caution right outside the last field window that um, you know that, that made it more of a more of a close race than than we were wanting. Um, but we had already got the lead at that point, and, and fortunately able to raise some heads up, and he had speed. Go to Kelly up here in the front. Kelly Crandall, racer.com. Billy, walk me through your emotions after Tyler crossed the finish line because the camera was on you for quite some time and you seemed really pumped up, almost relieved. Uh, you got quite the water bath, I think it was. So what was it like for you? Is it is it relief or, or why was this one just, it, it feels like it's different for you. Well, a little bit of everything, yeah, a relief for sure, um, especially on this weekend when you, you've got the dominant car and, you know, he's fastest in practice by a lot and fastest in qualifying and, you know, we didn't get the pole there. So, um, yeah, that was, that's one element of it. But the other one is just to, uh, to kind of put that note that everybody is bringing up of the bad luck to start the year, the bad finishes, the, the bad points position, you know, um, everybody's heard all that, you know, the team's had to endure that, um, you know, we know where the potential was, but you know, the guys that are working on this car and the guys back at the shop and they don't always get to live it and feel the emotion that we, that we do and that know where the potential is. So for that to happen, for him to dominate the race and, and, you know, have to endure those restarts and, and come home like that, it's just very validating and uh, very rewarding for just everybody that puts, puts the work in, um, behind the scenes. And, you know, we've, we've wondered where we were at on our road course program now for a while. We struggled last year and, uh, to bring him here, that was one of the hopes too, was that you know he could help guide us in the right direction, and certainly did. So it's uh, it's nice when all that comes together. Steve. Uh, Steven Stump, frontrip.com. Uh, Billy, obviously you're watching on top of the box. Um, you had, with all the cautions and overtime after overtime, there were some cars that had pitted for tires and had made their way back up for example, Ross, he had gone from spinning all the way to the top five at the end. Was there kind of, did a sense of like fear of uh, the, the cars with newer tires overtaking you as the cautions kept coming out? No, I think it was more just the fear of what level of aggression uh, guys behind us were willing to use. Um, you know, we felt confident in Tyler's speed and his ability that once we cleared him off of turn two, that it was over. But uh, that was a lot of opportunities for people to do otherwise entering one. And uh, for the most part, you know, the guys that we were around raced very clean and, and you know, they gave each other lanes to, to navigate through there. Um, but it can, it can go otherwise in a hurry. So I think that was the most nerve wracking part was just getting through turn one. Any final questions for our winning crew chief and owner? Well, oh, two more, we got Chris and then Holly. Chris Knight catch us uh, Denny, I don't know if you heard, but um, 
Sorry? Um, I don't know if you heard, but Kirk, Kirk got really emotional and choked up on, on the last lap of the broadcast and said that the team was in good was in good hands and he was proud to be a part of the organization. So I was just wondering what this moment is, is like to have Kurt in a different role for 23-11, uh, you know, as part of the team. Yeah, I mean, it's – it for sure would be for Kurt. I mean, he's – he was supposed to be in this car uh, this year and obviously, it, you know, with you know, his full-time career, you know, being cut short, it, it it it's different. It makes you feel different when you see your car going around the racetrack and – um, you know, as a team, we've been throwing a lot of curveballs, right? You know, we've had, um, I, I think last year, five drivers in our team, in our cars, when we had two full-time drivers, and that was all we were planning on. Um, but, you know, Kurt's been an uh, uh, integral part of what we do week in, week out. He shows up to practices. Uh, he shows up to our debriefs, uh, really help, helps with our partners, and, um, you know, just a, a great asset to our team. And, you know, if, if he can just bring one thought or idea to our drivers uh, in a weekend of something that he sees from the outside, then he's he's worth his weight in gold to us. So, um, you know, we, we love having Kurt. Uh, he's a great teammate. He, he really makes us, uh, you know, it's, he bonds the team. He, he brings RC cars to the race to the race shop and has, you know, the, the guys you know involved in doing that. So um, he, he's still a, a driver for 2311 and and team member for, for life. Denny, Billy, congratulations on uh, the big win, and good luck next weekend at Richmond. Appreciate you.